Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Carlos here again, bring you another video. Today, I want to share with you guys how you can build your own food concessions business without breaking the bank. And I'm going to show you guys how I got started. If you look at my thumbnail, you can see um, kind of how I got started. And I'm going to give you guys some tips on what not to do. So you're not sitting there twiddling your thumbs like I was in that picture. Anyway, we're going to give it a few minutes to let some people come in the chat. And uh, then we're going to get started. And uh, we can have a little Q&A at the end. If you guys have any questions, I'll answer them for you. Today is my off day. It's Saturday. I'm going to try this new live th live stream thing. That way we can start interacting more and uh, start building our businesses. I know this year has been a really a rough year with everything that's been going on in the country. And uh, a lot of people lost their businesses, lost their jobs. So we want to start getting back into the groove of things, start start building businesses again, start going out and uh, interacting with each other again. I know we're getting tired of sitting in the house anyway. Today, we're going to talk about how, how to get these businesses started and get out here and get this money. Anyway, <clears throat> hope you guys like my new dig, my new setup. I'm trying to get used to it here. Um, Gonna let a few more people come in. Um, you come in the chat, give me a shout out. Let me know where you're uh, coming in from. Let me know where you're at. Oh, Queen Sheba. Hey, you, you just got to get started. I can help you out. Just uh, hit me up, go to the website, set up a, con a consultation, and I'll get you where you need to be going. Oh, Texas. Oh, you got a, a nice area to get started. You got. You got an opportunity down in Texas to start some businesses that are really not down there yet. Like they got water ice. I'm sure you got shaved ice down there, but water ice is where it's at because a lot of people across the country don't know about water ice and they don't have access to it. If you get down there in Texas, you can start setting up shop, letting people know what water ice is, let them taste test it, start your branding and marketing. Start wholesaling it, and you'll uh, have the whole whole state on lockdown. Anyway, um, oh shoot, Orangeburg, South Carolina. What's up, Willie Brown? It South Carolina. That's another good spot. To get started with water ice. People will be sleeping on water ice. They just don't know. I'm telling you. I mean, I started water ice. I started with three little igloo tubs. I didn't even have a banner, just a, a tent. Three igloo tubs. I had cherry mango and blueberry that's all i had was three tubs of water ice and i used to go to these little uh small festivals and kill them and kill them just me by myself i didn't have no help at the time <clears throat> anyway if you check checking my thumbnail out you'll see that's me back in like 04 when i was just getting started in the business and didn't know what i was doing and um i was actually doing uh, italian water ice then some people call it water ice. Some people call it Italian water ice. Same thing. And I was doing shaved ice. And um, I really, I just went out there and just dove in head first. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have any mentors, nobody to, to show me what to do or how to get started. I just went out there and started making money. I wasn't really making a lot of money at first because I was making a lot of mistakes, like not knowing exactly what type of events to go to. I really didn't understand the market. A lot of people look at this business and they think, oh, well, it looks so easy when you go to a festival and you're walking out there, you're buying food, you see the guy selling lemonade. It looks easy. It looks like, oh, I can do that. But it's a lot more involved than you think. And if you don't have uh, someone to show you exactly how to get into to the business, it's gonna you're going to hit a lot of bumps in the road. Trust and believe. Check that thumbnail out. You don't see no people in line. All you see is me. A much younger me with no gray sitting behind my tent with my legs crossed i wish i had a partner just play spades or something anyway um if you um want to get started in the water ice business hit me up we set up a consultation hit me up on the website and i can help you get started but anyway like i said i got started in the water ice business with three igloos three scoops and one tent and if I could do it all over again, I would I would put the money into my marketing. What people fail to realize 
is when you're doing events, uh, festivals, fairs, uh, car shows, it doesn't matter. You got to put your money into the marketing because you got to let people know what you have. You don't want people to have to come up to your tent or to your booth, trailer, truck, food truck, whatever you have. You want people to know exactly what you're selling from a distance, especially if it's a type of event that's in a field. You want people across the field to be able to see, just look over and see what you have. And let's say, for instance, that you're selling lemonade. You want to make sure you distinguish yourself from the other uh, lemonade vendors. Make sure that you don't sell the same cup because when people walk around events, other people hey, say, hey, where'd you get that from? Where'd you get that lemonade from? And they'll just point over to wherever they got it from. And if your cup is distinguishable, they'll come get it from you, especially if it's good. Especially if it's good. And another another thing that people don't realize, and I see a lot of people make this mistake when they're doing food vending, is they don't take the time to make sure that whatever product that they're selling tastes absolutely great. Like your, your product has to be fantastic. People think because, oh, just, I'm out here this one time. But if you plan on doing this event year after year after year, that's how you build yourself up because people be expecting you. They'll come to that event just to buy whatever you're selling. Say, for instance, you're selling funnel cakes. People will come there just to buy your funnel cakes. They're looking for you because your funnel cakes were, were that good. Now, say, for instance, you just had average taste in funnel cakes. Now, why would they want to come and, and buy your funnel cakes? They're not going to want to come back again. That's why you got to make sure that you're selling really, really good tasting food. I know this one lady, so it's a husband and wife, and uh, they've been doing food vending for years. And I never understood. I don't know how they, they got to the point they are, but their food just is so bland. You buy their fries, their fish. There's no taste. There's no seasoning on it. I'm like, I don't understand how you guys are staying in business, but. They don't have any marketing and uh, they, they're, they're where they're at. They're just like kind of stagnant. You can look around. You can see the people that are really putting work in. Uh, they take pride in their food. You can see their business growing. <sighs> Sean Jones. Do you have a vendor? Do you have a vendor to get food and products from? Example, I want to do tacos. Would you just go to Costco's or is there a cheaper option? LaDawn Jones. Well, you might have a local vendor in your area that uh, sells supplies cheaper than uh, Costco's. You want to, if you're going to do something like tacos, you want to, you want to uh, make sure that you do a, a fantastic tasting taco because who, who's going to want to come to your truck and, and you got a taco that just tastes average i i wouldn't want to come but i know a guy that has a taco truck and in virginia right off the highway it's like a little small country town and his tacos are fantastic i'm telling you it's like i guess the guy has like a mexican background or whatever and uh you feel like you're in mexico when you bite in one of them tacos i'm telling you so just um it's sam if sam's club or walmart or costco uh have the supplies cheap, get them from there, but just make sure that your recipe is fantastic. Um, I wanted to tell you guys about um, my very first business that I got involved in. It was um, shaved ice. I, I was working at uh, McDonald's and KFC at the time, and um, I just wanted to get into this business, and I was saving, saving my money. I finally saved up enough money to get a shaved ice cart and a shaved ice uh, ice shaver. And you can see it in that picture on the thumbnail. I, th I think you can see the shaver on the table. And I um, started, it was, a, it was a big night. It was my first event. I remember like it was yesterday, it was like 2003. It's an African-American festival. And uh, I'm making all this syrup. <laughs> I'm making all this uh, sugar water and syrup because I'm so excited. I'm thinking I'm gonna go out here and make like two, $3,000. And uh, I'm up all night and um, 
I was really nervous. I was really nervous. All I had was the ice shaver, the cart. I didn't even have a tent. I didn't have any signage, just a shaver and a cart. And uh, I probably didn't even have a chair. Anyway, so I go out to the event. And I might have made $250. And I was so sick because the vendor next to me was selling funnel cakes and fish sandwiches. And that funnel cake powder was coming over because it was a windy day all into my face and my booth the whole day. You talk about upset. I was just sitting there sick to my stomach. And at the time, I didn't know why I wasn't making money. But come to find out, at that time in Delaware, people didn't know what shave ice were was. They uh, they knew what ice um, snow cones were, but they did not know what shave ice was. And I didn't have any marketing, no signage or anything. And I just I didn't make any money. And it went on like that for a couple of years, like not making money, wondering why I wasn't making money. No signage. I'm telling you, your banners. Your banners have got to be on point. Your signage, if you got a food truck, your logos, your graphics, you got to have graphics. You can't just put the words on your truck like back in the day. That worked back in the day, but it's a new time. You got to have graphics. You got to stand out. And once you draw them into your business, you got to give them a fantastic service and a fantastic product. That's the key. All right, guys, you got any questions? Any questions for me? On how to get started out here? I can't wait. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, things turn around this season and uh, they start letting opening the festivals back up again because, man, it, it was rough. It was it was it was really rough. I might have did three, four little small events last year, and I spent thousands of dollars. I, it's events that I paid for. That I already have paid for for next year because I paid ahead of time. And um, I guess that's a good in a way, but if they don't have the event again this year, it's not going to be good. Uh, right now, I'm doing nothing but tacos, so just so I can be. Oh, good idea. Good idea, uh, Lad Ladon Jones. Stick with it. Stick with it. Perfect it. Be the best. Always strive to be the best at what you do. You know what I mean? You got uh, any good marketing uh, signage and you got your branding down? Because if you go, are you doing a food truck or are you uh, doing a food tent? People kill me. They, they, they uh, send me these little messages uh, all the time uh, about a uh, food truck. I'm like, food truck, food trailer, food tent, it's, it's, it's all the same. It's just one has a motor in it and a transmission one doesn't it's just the same you're just your mobile restaurant your mobile kitchen you might be selling different products but it's the same concept same concept yeah so after i um got the shaved ice business i was um next to a vendor one day at an event and he told me about water ice and those banners that you see that says vitalis on there it was uh, he owned that business. He wouldn't let me borrow those banners. So I actually started selling water ice. Uh, he's the one to turn me on to that business. But what I didn't know at the time was his product was terrible. But I didn't know because his product is the only thing that I knew about as far as water ice went. And um, but once I went to Philly and started discovering water ice, and I went to New York and tasted some water ice. I knew that I was selling a terrible product and that's why I wasted a whole year selling a garbage product wondering why I wasn't making any money. Uh Sharvis Healthy Journey Woods is water ice the same same thing. Water ice, Italian ice, it's the same thing. People just call it different things. Water ice, Italian ice. Uh Jessica Gasson. I was thinking about setting up a tent at a random spot. No events in my city due to COVID. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I was thinking about the same thing. I was thinking about, uh, I was talking to a guy at the barber shop a while back about, because um, it's a busy little spot. I was going to set up and do a uh, lemonade and popcorn on the, on the weekend. And actually, it's crazy because there was a lady there 
her her husband has a little food cart and they do like fried fish and shrimp and they they were making a killing but they only set up on fridays and their fish i'm telling you they got the most amazing tasting food ever and i i complimented them i might interview them one day on the show let's see ladon jones i'm a truck driver <laughs> i'm a truck driver too and we eat the same crap so i was i was going to set up in truck south virginia no marking going to green peppers and onions and do my good idea ladon jones i'm telling you something i'm glad you mentioned that about being a trucker a truck driver and, and truck stops what i've discovered is everywhere that i go and there's multiple trucks at like a big warehouse there's no food for the drivers to eat so you're literally sitting there if you don't have food packed like a, a lunch pail and sometimes you're out longer than you you, you you're thinking you're going to be you're there starving one trying to find a place to deliver food to you if you can go set up at a place that has multiple tractor trailers box trucks coming in and out of there all day it's a gold mine i'm telling you and i've seen at least in the last three months 30 places that didn't have it no food but you got hundreds of drivers just right there with no food no drink or anything and i was like how come somebody hasn't figured this out yet oh but i see it i see it so if you could find that ladon jones that was a that was a that was a great comment that was a great it's a great opportunity there's so many opportunities out here that people don't even think about people just you know they you got to use your imagination sometimes like we're all just thinking about doing festivals and fairs <clears throat> but there's other opportunities out here uh, let's see what we got Joel John. I don't know if people have asked this before, but, but the thought of setting down roots and doing a restaurant. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, I don't. I haven't. Um, it's just not for me. Like I like the freedom of being able to go to where the crowd is. Um, and I like the festival atmosphere. I just always loved it. Um, since me and my step pop, he's going now. Uh, we we started doing this like back in oh two oh three, and um, I just like like the whole getting up early in the morning, uh, running around for supplies, meeting different vendors, meeting all the new people, and making a bunch of money, you know. And once you start dealing with a restaurant, you know you got a lot of overhead. But uh, if that's what you want to do, I would do it. But <clears throat> it's just not for me. It's not for me got here so how you guys out been faring out there with all this COVID stuff going on I know it's been rough for me I haven't even really been doing any videos because it's it's nothing to do you know what I mean like I had planned to do a lot of videos this summer especially a lot of videos at the festivals uh, actually at the events and stuff and Everything just got canceled. Everything got canceled. So are all you guys already food vendors and food truck owners, or are you guys trying to get into the business? If you guys can hear me, give me a hell yeah. Yeah, I'm down here <clears throat> in Delaware. It's about to snow tonight, so my wife, she's bugging me about putting ice in the driveway. So, guys, I hope you're uh, safe out there on the roads. Uh, Charvis, are you full-time? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm glad I'm not a full-time vendor with <laughs> what happened this past year. I mean, imagine the people that are actually full-time food vendors, and all they do is festivals and fairs. And they weren't able to make any income this year. And a lot of them put thousands and thousands of dollars out paying for events. And they couldn't do the event. That's that's and that's all their income, just doing food vending. Uh thank you, Tyler Westover. Yeah, it's like um damn, like I feel bad for those guys, you know. 
but it make it makes you think and now you know what to be prepared for once you do go full time you always got to have different streams of income i'm always trying to look for different streams of income like i don't just only do uh food vending i got a couple other businesses and i actually drive trucks but hopefully here in the next year or two um i'll only be doing my businesses that's my goal anyway and uh i just want to start expanding i want to start going like to a couple different states i don't want to just do like delaware or maryland i want to start going like to virginia uh, pennsylvania maybe north carolina too the Dawn Jones, thank you, Rand. Just trying to put money. Yeah, just put money into other things. Uh, you can't drive forever. Trust and believe. You cannot drive forever. And um, if your goal is to work for yourself, this is the perfect business. This is the perfect business to start because you can do this on the weekends, part time. You don't have to uh, commit to quitting your job and all that. You could just go out here. Find what you want to get into, figure out what you want to sell, what you like, because um, I've done it all. I've done like food, like uh, Italian sauces, fries, chicken. I've done all that. And I've done the snack foods. I've done uh, the water ice and ice cream. And what works best for me is the snack foods. I, I There's the advantages and disadvantages to the snack foods. Uh, but I like the snack foods that are high profit, like the uh the popcorn shaved ice the water ice the funnel cakes i like that type of stuff because the profit is really high and you can keep your overhead down but if you're doing food you're going to make more money you're going to gross more money because obviously uh the food sells for more than the snack foods but it's not necessarily saying that you're going to make more money but you'll definitely gross more money Charvis, I started off with hot dogs and now do ribs and wings also. Okay. So what kind of setup do you have? Do you have a trailer or a, a food truck? Charvis. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right. LaDawn Jones, I'm going to do popcorn. You taught me about popcorn in the long ago video. Uh, that's cool. Popcorn. I, I fell in love with the popcorn. Like I always used to see like one or two random vendors doing the kettle corn and I was, you, you would look at them and I was like, ah, I wouldn't want to do that. It looks messy. And then I really sat down and uh, I was looking at a guy on YouTube one day, some years ago. And I was like, that doesn't look too complicated. And he was talking about the profit. Do you know that you can make, it's according to how you cook it and the temperature and all that you can make from 500 to seven hundred dollars from one bag of kettle corn that costs you anywhere from 25 to 35 dollars that's making money and that's that's making real money i thought funnel cakes were good but oh you got a food trailer charvis oh nice nice you should send me a picture of that i would love to see what it looks like but yeah um 500 to 700 dollars off of twenty-five dollar to thirty-five dollar investment, include uh, include a couple more dollars for your uh, your oil. That's amazing. That's the type of money I like. Every time I see a bag of popcorn going over my counter, I just smile. Especially a large bag. It's a beautiful thing. What's more beautiful thing at the end of the night when you got so much money? It's like <laughs> you barely can organize it because it's just so much. You ever have those days? <clears throat> I can't wait till they come again. I bought me another uh, lemonade smasher because I want to. Um, I want to be able to do more volume um, at these festivals. About volume, you want to be able to um, get the food out as quickly as possible. But you got to have the people that can can actually produce the and uh, stay up to speed with the volume. So you got to make sure you train the people. That can keep up with the, the large crowds people think oh i want to go to a festival of fifty thousand people no you don't if you're not ready for that you're gonna get killed <laughs> you're gonna get killed there imagine if you're at a festival 
of 50,000 people and you got a line of 50 people the whole day, but you're only serving like one person, two people um, every two minutes, you're not going to make any money. That's why I will always talk about having a system like you got to you got to be pumping that food out. But you want to give good customer service, but pump it out fast because time is money. Time is money. You got to make as much money as you can in the eight hours or the 10 hours, however long the festival is. Some of them are five hours, but I stay away from the short festivals. Pump these hots in 2019. We were making five to 700 on a three hour. Oh, lunch crowd. 2020 was terrible. But it will come back out outdoor food. Oh, outdoor food surface is the future. That was a good point. That was a good point. Hump these hots. That was a really, really good point you just made. It is the future. And uh things are changing. I'm telling you, like with this social media. I don't know if you guys seen a video that I made where um uh, my wife came up with the idea of uh, just putting an ad on um, Facebook and we said we we're going to make popcorn and do lemonade and people were hitting us up with pre-orders because you had to pre-order that way you're not out there just wasting food and product and I was surprised at the money we made she, she was like oh don't worry it'll be worth it it was two three hundred dollars and we only did it for like two or three hours I was like oh we got to do that again so use Facebook Instagram, social media, use all that to your advantage, especially now with the way things are. If you have the type of product that you actually can do that with, and most of them you can, uh, especially if you got funnel cakes, things like that, uh, especially if you got a food truck and you do food, you could do endless things. Like you could just go to where the people are and make that money. I want to thank you guys for coming out today too. Uh, joining me on this lovely Saturday evening. You got anybody uh, from the area, the DMV, uh, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, DC area? I never hear anybody say they're from that area. I'm, it's like I'm the only one over here by myself. <clears throat> okay, will be. I'm definitely losing money and have a great food. Uh, food. food. I just moved to Dallas and don't do nowhere go 35,000 truck and ready to work somewhere because okay because the festival's not yeah well will be's um at least you got wheels on that on that truck and you can go to where the people are i don't know if you heard me earlier but go um look in your area if you're in an area like that has a lot of uh warehouses where tractor trailers are coming in every day and go and contact them to see if you can set up outside of, of that warehouse because truck drivers they don't have anywhere to, where to get any food when they're, and they're sitting at these warehouses for hours some people sit there for 24 hours and um they, they don't have anywhere to buy any food so if you can get into these warehouses of central pennsylvania tyler westover you're in the perfect spot for what i'm talking about there are so many warehouses in pennsylvania new jersey uh, New York that have the situation that has those uh, warehouses where tractor trailers are coming in and sitting for hours with nowhere to eat, nowhere to get anything to drink. So if you contact these warehouses and find the person you need to talk to, if you can set up, you're going to make a boatload of money, especially if you can get to where you're the only person uh, that's able to set up out there. You're going to need a lot of help. I'm telling you, you're going to need a lot of help. Yeah, um, I hope you guys like my new little live stream setup. I said, it took me a while. I was like, man, I got to start live streaming. Cause I, want, I like to sit and talk. I love talking about uh, the business. But I don't have anybody to talk about since my pop's gone. Me and him used to just sit up for hours just talking about it. Where we're going to go next. And I was a master at finding events. I used to scour the internet and finding all these little rinky-dinky events. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. Some of the smaller events are better than the bigger events. What I found um, 
people say, oh, I don't do small events. But you got to be careful when you say you don't do small events because I've been to events where it was a thousand people, but there was only one or two other food vendors. And I made more events than when there was 10,000 people. So you got to be careful. Uh, it's according to what the event is. So don't always say, I'm not going to do small events. And maybe you're not ready to do big events. You don't have the uh, capacity to handle the large crowd yet. Okay, we got 19 people in here watching. Don't forget to like the video, guys. <laughs> helps the channel grow, helps get the word out. Uh, Simmons Executive, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate that. Um, so you guys, how, how have you guys been making it throughout uh, the season of uh, not being able to go out and do events? Have you guys found any other creative ways to go out and make money? Big Mag the Fisher. Yeah, get the likes up, peeps. Get them up. I love that little thumbnail profile pic you got, too. Love it. I don't know about you guys, but it is cold up here in this northeast. Yeah. I was uh I was in New York yesterday. I had a load driving a load up New York, got out of my truck, and tears just went came down my eyes and froze immediately on my face. I just wanted to cry it was so cold. <clears throat> oh, uh Charvis, you've been doing apartment complexes. I never heard of that before. Wow, apartment complexes. That's a good idea. I get it's a lot of people in apartment complexes. That is a good idea. Let me put that up on the screen. Apartment complexes. That's one way to make money during all this uh, craziness that's going on in the world. It's a lot of foolishness going on. I'll be glad when it's over with because I just want to get back in the swing of things. Like I can't even prepare for the uh, upcoming season. Because I don't know if we're going to have an upcoming season. So how's it, how are you going to prepare for something you don't know if you're going to have? Uh, a one event called me a few weeks ago and said that they're going to uh, they're going to have the event, but or is it going to be where only a certain amount of people are going to be able to come? Because this is a really really big event in Maryland, and uh, actually it's one of the biggest events that I do. Uh, Will be. I've been watching your videos, watching your videos for years, and that's why I got into the business. I do really great in Omaha, Nebraska, but it's snowing, so that's why I decided to come down to Dallas. Texas. Oh, nice, nice. Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha. Thanks for watching the videos. I hope, hope you got some good info from the videos. I just I put the information out to help people, and uh, I've been really growing the brand over the years. Uh, mobile food booth uh started out back in 2016 and i was like man i got all this information in my brain maybe i should share it and uh just built the brand built the website and i got the youtube facebook instagram don't forget to check me out on instagram I'm starting to put some content up over there now and uh check us out on facebook Smoke barbecue therapy. I have my apps appointment Tuesday to start my LLC. You inspire my starter. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Smoke barbecue therapy. Let me know how things are going and send me a picture of your setup. I'm glad I could inspire you. I've been inspired by other people and uh, that's what you got to do. You got to pass it on. Pass it on. Uh, uh, LaDawn. Jones, no, no, I'm not an uh, owner operator. Um, I'm a company driver. I um, I tell my company I'm only staying out once or twice a week, but they pulled the okie doke on me this week and had me out three days. So I'm going to have a talk with them when I go back in there. Usually I'm only sleeping in the truck one to two nights a week tops, and I'm off on the weekends. I could, I, um, you know, I got kids and stuff, so I don't want to be out away from them for too long. Yep, yep, yep. So what are you guys, uh, what are you guys selling? You guys selling uh, 
snack foods, funnel cakes, hot dogs. Uh, I saw a guy doing, um, I wanted to bite off of him so bad. I really, I, his line was so long and his food looked so good. I swear I wanted to bite off of him. He was selling like roasted corn, but he had like crab meat on it with the seasoning and the sauce. And he had a line so long you couldn't even see where it ended. And I was like, man, I wanted, I was just watching him. You know, you had that person coming by watching you on the side of your booth. I was one of those guys that day. I was like, man, this guy is killing him. He had roasted corn and crab meat. And he had like this special sauce that he was putting on it. And it, it looked amazing. You can't always try new things though because everything's not going to work. I had one guy contact me about doing vegan. I was like, I don't know if vegan will work at festivals because most people aren't vegans. You know, now if you go to vegan events, that'll work. But how many vegan events are there? You're going to have to uh, find a lot of vegan events to make your business flourish. Let's see. Don't forget to like the video, guys. Give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down, whatever you want to do. And uh, show some love. Show some love to the channel. Uh, yes, brother. Yeah. yeah, so, guys, I think what I'm going to do is I'm about to wrap this up. Unless you guys got a couple more questions. Um I'm actually going to do another live tomorrow, um, probably around the same time. So make sure you guys tune in and uh, don't forget to share the video. And uh, we're going to have a good show tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to have a lot of interesting things to talk about. Uh, hope you guys enjoy your day. And uh, I'm going to get on out of here. You guys be safe. And uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thank you.